Hello, bonjour everybody. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for watching my video and thank you for those who subscribe to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Flames of War, city fighting, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the rules and principles of fighting in a city. So my first point would be how we look at a platoon inside the city building. So we have to consider that when there's four walls like this, the city building it's complete, so there's wall on all the opening you can see. The principle is to help you to manage your troop inside without having to remove the building every time. Now when we look at a platoon inside the city building that is divided in four rooms, is who stay in command, who is not in command, etc. So first, we know we have our commanding platoon here. And everything in this room is part of the platoon. Now we have a flamethrower in this room, and it's also in command with the command commander platoon. The reason for that, they are adjacent to each other. The same goes with the two teams here in the second room. They are adjacent to that room that make them in command of the platoon leader. For that team here that is opposite to the command leader uh, in this room, they are not considered in command. The reason for that is there's two walls to go across to join him. The same for this way, there's two. And when you are in a room, you can move from one room to the other, but you cannot do that on the same movement. So how do we play movement in the city building? So first, you can move between room to room, but only enter a room and cannot exit on the same movement phase. So even if the movement is eight inches maximum, you can enter a room, but not exit the room in the same movement phase. So a new movement, you can decide, I want to move in command with my command leader so I can move one room. Even if there's space in the room where the command is, you can only enter the room and you cannot exit the room in the same times. Also, when you enter the room, if there's several levels in it, like this team entered the room and decide to, do to go to the second floor, it is just part of the same movement, even the third floor. So that's the basic of movement inside a city building. Now let's say the unit is pinned down. So we're going to put them like this. The unit is pinned down, so everybody is pinned down. You can move when you are pinned down, but only inside the same room. So this team pinned down can move to the second floor if they wish to, or you wish to, if there's space for him. But that team, or this one, for example, or this one, cannot change room when you're pinned down. You're confined to your room. Now, if you are near an enemy in a city building, your troops cannot be in less than two inches from your enemy. So if you look at it, anything, there's like a bubble around that room. And nothing, no enemy force can be inside the two inches. So if my troops are moving, it has to be at least two inches from the enemy room on the outside of the building. So if you are moving outside the building, you have to be at least two inches from the enemy. That's the principle there. But if you are inside the building, you can occupy the room beside or opposite to your enemy because it's a fighting room to room. So you can own a room knowing the enemy on the other side but they are protected by the, the wall in between. Now for the attack phase or fighting phase, shooting phase, we'll talk first with bombardment. So if you decide to bombard with a mortar or artillery against a building or troops around the building, and you decide to put your marker right here, you say, oh, I'm gonna put it here, it will cover troops outside the building and inside the building, then you cannot. When you decide to place a marker outside, only troops outside the building that are part of a, over the template 
will be affected by the bombardment. So if I have troops here, for example, and I got one over here and one over here, all those three teams will be subject to bombardment. But all teams in the room behind are not subject to bombardment. Now, if I decide to bombard a room, or I would like to bombard a certain room, and my spotter or my command see the room, you may decide to place the marker inside that particular room. Now, if you place the marker inside that room, all room, ad all team adjacent to the room, or a other unit adjacent to the room, will not be subject to bombardment. Also, all team outside the building is not subject to bombardment. Only team inside that particular room will be affected by the bombardment. One important point to consider is if you are fighting room to room and you have your own troops in the same building but in the room adjacent to the enemy you would like to bombard, you cannot. It's too close for your own good, basically. And the same principle you have to be four inches from the template inside if you bombard inside a building and you would like to bombard a certain building the adjacent room are too close to comfort and you cannot do that so what happens if you decide to fire a shot using a brutal weapons now what is a brutal weapons a brutal weapon is any gun of high caliber may be considered a brutal weapon not that not that exactly. When you look at your card, you can see on the notes if that gun is considered a brutal gun or not. In the case of brutal gun, the broom bar, have that note beside that say brutal forward firing, slow firing, that means it is a brutal weapon. So what we do if we decide to fire is allowed to one shot, move or not moving, vehicle out or moving, and you need a four to hit the British, Canadian. You need a five because they are concealed. So for example, we roll a five. Now we know we hit one time this guy. Because it's a brutal weapon, and it is aiming inside a room, you will die, roll a dice, and a total of one, for example, here, that means another team is hit as well. So if you hit a four, four more teams would be hit as well. So instead to one team hit, now we have five teams hit with a four, etc. So every number of the, of the dice you roll is the number of hit inside that room. So even if you have six hit, there's only three teams, then they are all placed on those three teams, even though the room beside have some teams from the same platoon or different team but from the same enemy. So only affect the people in that room. Now the Canadian and British will have to roll save five times because we hit one and we roll a four for four more team or four more hit. So they have to f save five times and if they fail any then you go Firepower, and because it's a brutal weapon, it's auto, the team will die automatically or be destroyed automatically. Now we have the Canadian inside that room and this room in the back, and we have the assault penny, German assault penny, getting ready to assault or attack the enemy. So, first of all, when it comes time to fire at my German, for example, the Canadian here. Everybody in this room, if there's an opening and see, can fire on my German. So even the people two, three rows behind, they are inside the room, they can fire at my German. People on second floor, if there's opening or third floor, can fire at the enemy. So in this case, you count how many units inside the room have six team of a rifle and brand gun and one team of Piat. The Piat 
depending on his distance, can decide to use his piat against the infantry. But every team inside the room fire at their rate of fire according to the up and down or not, or if they have moved or not. So they can shoot, am I German? As long as when you imagine yourself inside the room in this window, then your arc of view is like this. So if there's troops here, even if they are nearby, you can see it from this window. For example, you can shoot, but this window, the arc of fire is like that. You cannot shoot. So if I place my German here, then this guy more than likely cannot shoot at him, but those can shoot at him. That's the idea behind it. You can see through the window, and what they can see, if you were to look through the window, that is your arc of fire, and that's the enemy you see and you can fire at. Now, if the people are outside the building, are firing inside this room, even though the first row are with troops, you can shoot at everybody. So if you aim at this guy and you have nine dice and you hit six times, then you can allocate one dice to every team inside the room regardless how deep they are inside the room. But even if you go through the window and you can see the room beside, behind, you cannot shoot at people inside that room. Don't forget that's technically imaginary wall here. So even if when we look at it, we can see there's troops. When you fire, you can fire only at troop inside this room, if you're aiming to that room. Now let's talk about assault. So we move our troops near the Canadian British inside the building. So we're going to attack, start an assault from the outside. So how does it work? So for example, me, I bring my troops at least two inches from the enemy because it said well, I cannot be less than two inches from the building. First, I'm going to use, I'm going to try to pin them down. So first I have my flamethrower. My flamethrower moving, it's a rate of fire of two. So the Canadian are here. I have two dice, hit on four, because they are concealed, I hit on five. So I roll two dice, hit one time. Because it's a flamethrower hitting a room or enemy platoon, the team enemy get pinned down automatically. There's no five hit, they are pinned down. So I hit one time, he need to do his save, so he need the three to save. He got a six, is safe. For example, he roll a two, then there's no, even if they are concealed and bulletproof covered because it's a flamethrower, and the firepower is auto, the team is destroyed automatically. So that's for the flamethrower. Now, now my pioneer will fire at the room. And if we go to the principle that only two teams are in front, then only six shots can be fired at the room. So they hit on four, hit on four five because they are concealed. So a six shot, hit on five. I got two hit. Then they will do for their arm uh, save. They roll a one and a five because the one is safe. The one I need firepower, I need a six. I got a six, so a second team is destroyed. Now part of the assault only, the five team, the flamethrower is not part of the assault because the assault for flamethrower is a assault on the four plus, so you need to roll a four plus, so usually it's not part of the assault. So in this case, we have our four team part of the assault with the command. Only defensive fire from inside that room can be done. While you do assault, usually they said anybody, any team that is eight inches from the assault can conduct defensive fire. In this case, because we attack a room, 
Only people in this room can conduct defensive fire. So if there's people in the room adjacent or behind, they cannot be part of the defensive fire. So we count the number of teams we have. We have one, two, three, four, five. Only one shot for each team in the platoon inside this room. So it says five shot. And we hit. We are hit on the four. I have five dice. And only two teams are destroyed. The rest is safe. So one, two team destroy. The command go forward. So now I have my assault pioneer platoon team. It has three teams. They fire three shots each. And also, because they are assault pioneer, the skill for deadly assault is two plus. So I roll, anything is 2 plus, destroy the enemy. So for in this case, I'm going to fire 6 dice first, and the 2 plus, everybody will be dead. But let's say there's only 2 hit. So we remove the Canadian 2 unit. Now the Canadian can do a counter attack, so they roll. Their skill, uh, their motivation, that is a four. And if you see, for example, they roll a one, they lose, so they have to leave the room. How to leave the room? The Canadian can move out six inches or can move adjacent room if they are not occupied by the enemy. So in this case, for example, my Canadian will change room and move on the other room behind or beside. So that's how you conduct assault into a building or from the outside to inside the building. Here I removed this wall but just for the camera so you have to assume there's a wall here so it's a complete building but for better view with the camera I decided to remove this wall. I kept part of that wall so you get a pretty good view of what's going on inside. So let's see how it works for an assault from inside city building. So let's say my German assault pioneer are in this room and adjacent to him there's British Canadian troops. So on their turn they said I would like to assault this room and this room for example. So they're gonna split the troops or they may decide we just contest this room. When you do an attack, it starts right away with defensive fire. Only team contested the room can do defensive fire. The defensive fire toward the assault, the assault will benefit from concealment because of the wall, also benefit from bulletproof cover. That's the only time during an assault a team can be in bulletproof cover is an attack from room to room. So everybody in this room, including people on different floor and behind the two units here, can fire defensive against the attacker. So let's say the attacker decide to go here, defensive fire against them, they hit two times, bulletproof cover, they fire, they did not hit. Now, the attacker will fire their weapon with the skill, and for them it's assault, deadly assault, and they hit on the two plus. So in any roll, one, two, three, four, five, six, roll of two plus, and they have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen shot to a two plus that room. So more than likely, everybody would be gone. But just for the good of it, they destroy only three teams. Now them decide to counterattack. They need to roll their motivation skill, that is a four plus. Let's say they fail. If they fail, people on the bottom floor may flee to the next room 
or outside six inches. But every team, second and third floor, are automatically destroyed. Because they cannot jump here while the Germans are already here and flee. So second and third floor are automatically destroyed and the platoon leader is uh, by himself outside. So that platoon would be in problem. So that's for assault one room with more than one floor. If you're not successful to destroy everybody and they fail their motivation, all team on second and third floor are destroyed while everybody else have to leave the building or move to the next room. So let's say he move to the next room, so now he's become in contact with that platoon. That's all his assault in city building. Now the German invade the room. They may decide to have only two teams inside and keep the other in the other room. Also, when you move them, you can decide to move them second and third floor if they have space for the second and third floor. So that's all attack of uh, assault in the city building is done. One point I did not talk is if you inside the building, you have an instant gun, for example, a six pounder. Then, in this case, a six pounder, let's say it's facing this direction, is not part of defensive fire because it's not pointing at the enemy, can only fire forward, and you cannot turn to face, especially inside the building. If it is not destroyed on the assault, and the contest room is lost by the British Canadian, then the assault gun, if it was not destroyed during the assault, is automatically destroyed. He cannot walk out or change room. Now let's say that my German assault, they destroy one team, and that's it. So now they have to counterattack. They need a four, they're successful rolling a four. So they counterattack. Now they use their skill all as well to destroy the enemy. And they have two teams. So let's say they destroy two German teams. Now the German roll their motivation skill to counterattack and they fail. So technically when they fail, usually when you are in the assault, you fail you have to withdraw at least six inches. So technically, when you fail your counterattack, you have to withdraw six inches from the assault position. In this case, because we are inside the building and we are fighting room to room, the German just go back on their position they were before. So they go in their room. And that stops the assault. If they wish to get off the building, then they will have to move at least six inches. But because they just go back in their room, it stopped the attack, the assault right there, and we go to the next turn four. If this complete their turn, or to the next segment of their assault. So just complete my city fighting principle and rules. I hope you enjoy. If you see any mistake or if I've made obvious mistake for sure, let me know in the comments below. If you have any comments about how the rules and principles work, let me know in the comments below as well. So thank you for watching. See you soon with my next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.